Good morning guys and girls, uh, welcome to the Kingfisher. Today we're going to be talking about spinning for Natal Snook. We're going to just go through the actual gear itself and give you a few little tips and tricks as we go along. So we're going to be talking about spinning from both the shore and from the boat and obviously what, what's different about the two, why you can't use the same rod for both and things like that. So to start it off, uh, let's talk about the offshore market and we'll then go through back to the shoreline. So starting with the rod, which is a very important piece of equipment, we've got the BG 7'6 MS spinning rod. Now it is a two piece, it is 7'6, which is a little bit long for you guys on the kayaks, but the nice thing is being able to take it apart and put it back together means you can fit it even in the smallest of ski hatches. So. The nice thing about that, he's got a very nice soft tip, which is important with spinning for snook, because not only, two of the most important things, one, the snook's mouth is very soft, so you can pull a lure very easily if you have a stiff rod. You're gonna just pull too hard and it's gonna just pop the hook. And two, you're often using very small lures, because the snook are feeding on generally little sprats or little glasses that have been washed out of the river mouths and things like that. So you want something that's got a nice soft tip and that can actually launch the lures, and when you're fighting the fish, that it's not gonna pull the hooks. So, with those, those things in mind, the BG is a phenomenal stick for that from the boat. That guy casts from 14 to 28 grams, which will work with the lures that I'm gonna show you later. And yeah, very nice guides, double-footed the whole way, so they're nice and strong. They're not gonna get knocked off when you're putting them into your ski. The inserts are pressed in, so you're never gonna have them popping out and things like that. Okay, so to that, we are matching the BG 4000. There is a smaller model, the 3000. Some guys do prefer the slightly smaller reel on here just to make it a lighter combo. My preference is for the 4000 because it has the slightly bigger handle. Now, not only does that mean the spool's a little bit bigger, so you're getting more line retrieved in per turn, but also the bigger handle, once you get some snook slime on you, or if it's on the boat and you get a bit of water on there, or you're spinning on the shore, you get water on there, that little paddle handle does sometimes slip out of your hand when you're trying to retrieve quickly. So this guy grips nicely, even if you've got bigger hands. Grips nicely, spins very easily, and the reel is an absolute beast. So if you're spinning for snook and you accidentally do a kakuta or a tuna or something like that, you're gonna land him just fine. Nice proper drag on there, probably puts out about nine kilos, but in all honesty, uh, in terms of facts and figures, it's more than enough for what you're gonna need to do with it. For the price that you're paying, you really cannot beat this. It is an absolute workhorse, and yeah, just a phenomenal, phenomenal reel. The nice thing about this one, for you guys that are multifaceted, like many of us are, the 4000 is gonna fit on the rod for the shore base spinning as well. So you've got one reel that you can do multiple things with. So that's a big plus. Saving you money, saving you time, putting you first. To that, J-Braid, it's in my opinion, value for money, uh, breaking strength, and just at an all round good wearing braid, you, you literally cannot beat it. At 15 pounds rated, it's actually breaking it closer to 30 pounds. It's almost double its breaking strand. It throws very well, it doesn't hold the water like a lot of braids do. It's a nice tight weave and it lasts a very, very long time. So 300 meters of that will fill that. Now, there are two options onto that. I prefer with Snook, I do prefer using Maxima. And this is the Ultra Green 30 pound. This is generally what I use for spinning either from the shore or the boat. The nice thing about it, it's very abrasive resistant but it does have a little bit of stretch, which is the important bit for me. When you're spinning for snook, you're generally retrieving quite fast. When that snook hits it, there's a lot of shock that goes into the, into the line, into the kit and everything like that. And if you're using fluoro, which doesn't have any stretch, yes, you do have more abrasion resistance with fluoro. So if you use something like a Siglon fluoro, um, more abrasion resistance, it is clearer underwater, but you've got no shock absorption. You can do an FG on there, or what I prefer to do, is I take the braid and I tie it directly to a small swivel. So these little guys here, you would have seen it in the panning shot. It's a normal Japanese power swivel. They are hellishly strong for their size. And it just makes a nice small profile and your leader then just gets tied straight onto that. So it doesn't get pulled into your guides. Some guys are gonna argue that it makes a bubble trail and the fish eat that and whatnot. I've never had that, so I can't comment. But I have that swivel up there 
Then I'll have a, sort of about a meter or so of uh, the Maxima. And then I'll put another swivel and a split ring. And that split ring then I just attach straight with a pair of split ring pliers onto the, the lures of choice. So split rings you would have seen, which is those little guys there. And just having a pair of split ring pliers helps a hell of a lot with that. Now, a lot of people find that a bit tedious to put the split rings on. So the next best thing to do is to use a clip. Now these little mustard fast attaches are so easy to use and they, they just clip on and clip off very, very quickly. And they've got a very nice big round section at the front where the lure actually clips. So it gets a lot of free movement. So if you're a guy that prefers clips, that is definitely a way to go. So for the shore, there is, in my opinion, only one rod, and that is the BG 10 foot 6 HFS. It is a 10 foot 6 rod, three piece. It costs anywhere from 30 to 70 grams, but we've pushed it above that and gone below it. It's still the action of the rod, much like the BG for the offshore. It's a nice soft tip, and it's one of those rods that once you've used it and actually fished with it, it's, you, you really struggle to go back to anything else. You can use this not only for your stook, you can use it for your shad fishing, you can use it for catching, scratching for bronze bream, and that 4000 BG fits on your just pilikis. They all come with a long butt. Now, we've had guys that have altered them, cut them shorter, moved the winch and also because they don't, the older school tends to like a uh, winch right down here at the bottom. This is designed for when you're throwing, you're pulling on this and you're pushing on there. And it, once you've learned how to cast like that, your lures, you're going to get an average distance of over 100 meters. And that's for literally anyone. So that guy is a big, big plus and you definitely need to try this out. Not only do they look pretty cool with all the little gold trimmings and black, but they are lovely. Okay, so in terms of the actual lures themselves, um, I've got two ones here that have taken the, the spinning world by storm, really. And that's the Kingfisher anchovy spoon. Now, the big thing about him, if you put him right next to the anchovies that we do get around this time of year, so at the moment it's March, this is really the time you want to be spinning for your snook and your kuta and things like that. You do get these schools of anchovies that come in and this little guy is just picture perfect for there. Now, so there's an 18 gram there, that and the, that I've got here, the 25. You can see he's just a slightly bigger profile, but that extra seven grams of weight does make a difference if you need to cast that little bit further. So I always recommend you keep a couple of these in a, in a few different sizes and just have them in your box rigged and ready to go. As I mentioned with the rigging wise, you can put, what I do is put split rings on the front of all of my lures and then at the front of my leader I've got that swivel and I just connect it up quickly. It's, once you get used to it, it's as quick as a snap swivel in all honesty. It's just a much more neater approach and you get about a centimeter or so of bite protection in front of your lure, which is, unless you're looking at those snook from seven kilos up, if you're looking at the ones sort of three, four, you know your average snook, they are more than enough protection there. Nice thing about these, quality split rings rigged and ready. Uh, it's got a very, very nice uh, big gun on the back, mustard big gun. So they are strong as all hell. And yeah, those two little guys are just perfect for off the boat. And then the heavier sizes, so from the 25 gram up, are gonna be your ones you're gonna use from the, from the shore. Then speaking of the shore guys, the bullet spoon has really been kind of a revolution when it comes to casting distance. Because it's normally shaped like a bullet, or really two bullets fused together, two bullet heads. It's got a nice sharp point, rounded edges, and it just travels very, very well. Now, Kingfish has taken that to the next kind of level. We've done these, what they call the mucho spoons. The pinky is my, one of my personal favorites, but that little shape there, you can see he's a very nice rounded shape and he flies through the air. So if you need that extra distance just to get to the snook, because normally they 10 meters out of your casting range as usual, and being able to change to this little guy here, which is 45 grams. So he's a little bit heavy for your, the spinning rod of the boat. But from the shore based point of view, they do a, 50, a 45 and a 55 gram. And both of those travel an absolute mile. Your main things there are getting a decent braid that's not going to fill up with water as soon as you uh, cast it once or twice. So the braids that have got looser, um, looser weaves and things like that really don't work for this kind of aspect. Also, your four strand braids aren't ideal for this because the, the strands are a little bit thicker, they're a little bit rougher, they just don't cast as well as an eight. So 
eight strand braid like the Dawa that we mentioned there, the J braid. And also you want a nice quick retrieve because often it's as fast as you can retrieve is, is the important bit. You, you can't outpace a snook ever. Actually, there are very few fish that you can wind too quickly for. Shad is one of them, but. The two setups that we mentioned here are brilliant for spinning for most of your little shore game fish and for things like snook, like bonnies and things like that, where you want to be able to cast a long distance, wind quickly, but if you do hook something bigger, you're still gonna be able to handle it. So both these setups are gonna be brilliant. From the shore, you can do Garrick with that, you can do Shad. You, it's, it's a very, very versatile setup that just works for pretty much everything. So, guys, now with all of that in mind, um, whether you're on the boat, whether you're from the shore, pretty much any of our branches or any of the dealers that do sell the Kingfisher and the Dower products will have all of this stuff in stock. It is high quality equipment that's going to last you a very, very long time and it comes in very affordable compared to a lot of other brands. So, get your closest store and uh, get some tackle and start spinning for snook. Cheers guys.